For centuries, scientists, historians, and Bible scholars have studied the stars. Many believe there are messages in them. One of the most significant for Christians and Jews was the Star of Bethlehem, which foretold the birth of Christ. Some scholars have argued whether this star was genuine or a legend created by the early church. In his documentary, The Star of Bethlehem, Rick Larson unlocks this heavenly mystery by following clues from the Bible. Well, Rick Larson joins us now. Rick, welcome to the 700 you so Club. Much. You're a law professor, not an astronomer. How did you get into this whole search? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you, if, you talk, if you talk to people who wind up in ministry, I think an awful lot of them will tell you they've been tricked. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, what happened to me is uh, my neighborhood had a, a, a community Christmas celebration where all the front yards went the same way. Uh huh. But it wasn't had nothing to do with Jesus. It was animals and presents and bunnies and stuff like Polar that, and we didn't do it. <laughs> So everybody did it except us, and when the time came and the kids were driving through and <laughs> looking at all the houses, ours was dark. And so they're saying, oh, look, Daddy, here's where the atheist lives, you know. <laughs> so being a Christian did not pan out that, way, that so time. So you needed to do something to fast, counter that, right? Fast, and it was like this year is so frigid. We had a frigid winter, my daughter Mary and I, she was about waist high that time. We ran into the garage and made Weissman, huh? and we put him in the yard, and Mary started the whole thing, and she said, Dad, we got the Weissman. Don't we need a star? I said, yeah. I guess we do. So if I'm going to make a star, well, what was it? What did it yes. do? How long did it last? Did it move? Yeah. Was it an angel? Was it the Shekinah glory of God? Yeah. So I started the research, and that's what's changed my life. Well, talk a little bit about what it was. Some people say maybe it was a comet or some kind of other, you know, sign in the sky that was out of the ordinary. Yeah. For, what, what, what was it? Well, when I began the research, I was surprised at how many theories had been put out there. Uh -huh. And it makes you wonder, I'm a researcher by trade, it's a, I'm a lawyer. And so you, you think, you know, if everybody looks at the same evidence, shouldn't we arrive at somewhat similar results? Yes. But they're all over the deck. And I realized after looking at it closely, the reason for that, and it's because they don't take the Bible very seriously. Yeah. If you go back to scripture and you comb through Matthew with a fine tooth comb, like uh, you're looking for every tiny clue, you can, you can carve out nine characteristics of the biblical star. Talk about some of those. So when you get those together, that means that we have a fair amount of data. And if you get experts talking about the nine points, well, then we can come to some conclusions. So some of the nine points are obvious. Uh -huh. They're easy. Because when uh, the Magi arrive, they ask this loaded question. They say, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? So that's three clues. Yeah. Whatever they saw in the sky suggested to them kingship, birth, and the Jewish nation. Okay, that's easy. Mm -hmm. But some of the clues you know, are a little bit more obscure. Um, for one, they saw the star when they were in the east. They traveled all the way to Jerusalem. Don't know where they came from, don't know how they traveled, but if they were from Persia, if they came through the Fertile Crescent, we're talking about months. Yes. And they arrive in Jerusalem and they still see the star. Yeah. So it lasted over time. That's another clue, right? Um, and then, uh, so you could put all nine together though, you can start eliminating things, things fall out. You can't, it can't be, you know, a shooting star if it lasts over time, right? right? Exactly. Uh, and then we look at the ancient uh, records and there are lots of other ways to make the study happen. But here's the thing that blows me away. Matthew is no scientist, <laughs> he, uh, yet he wrote his, his gospel and got nine points which happened, I mean, they're right there in the sky precisely correlating with what he wrote down. He couldn't have known. This mm -hmm. is the Holy Spirit of God. So when he wrote his, his story, his account of the star, it would hold up to scientific scrutiny 2,000 years later when we're pressing it extremely hard. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, my goodness, there are things in the sky that precisely correlate with what he described. Do you think everybody noticed this happening in the sky? I mean, it, it it signified to the shepherds as well where the stable was, but at the same time, the Magi came months later. I mean, it, it, did everybody notice it or just? You know, I, I can't say everybody did. I think probably not, but I, don't, I do know the Romans noticed it because they wound up putting it on a coin, which is a longer story than we can tell here. Huh. But so the Star of Bethlehem actually appears on a Roman coin. Um, but uh, I think it was something that was noticeable, but understandable only when explained by experts. Mm -hmm. So while the people in Jerusalem may have seen something of interest, almost certainly did, um, when the Magi arrived and explained it all and put it in context, I think that's when it blew their minds. What are the odds of something like this happening? I mean, you've done some study now sure. on, on things that go on in the sky yes. and history of that. Well, you know, the solar system and the universe itself is, it operates like a great clock. Everything's extremely regular. Unbelievably. And, and many events recur. Yeah. 
So if you take a series of events like Matthew describes, any one of those events might well happen again. Um, sometimes on short intervals, sometimes on much longer ones, and sometimes they seem to be aperiodic. You don't know when they will recur. Mm -hmm. But if you stack nine things up, you get a reducing probability each time you add another improbable event. And so by the time you have nine, you have the recurrence, uh, uh, the likelihood becomes basically nil. And of course, it surrounds the birth of the one who claimed to be the, the Christ. Right. And so right. reproduction, it'll never happen again, put it that way. There, there also are some people who say that, uh, that all of this happened about 2 or 3 B.C., and yet there are scholars who say that the death of Herod agree, occurred in 4 B.C. Do you have any problem with those discrepancies, or where do you go with that in your study? You know, when you're dealing with 2,000 years ago and scholarship yeah. <laughs> at that distance, you're going to have difference of opinion. And um, uh, yes, I would say probably the main line opinion is that Herod died in 4, and so obviously the star had to have happened before that. Yeah. Um, but I think the latest scholarship is counter to that. It, it ten, tends to indicate that Herod died in 1 BC. And uh, there's a lot of excellent scholarship that's uh, the most recent uh, there. And, uh, and I'm convinced that they're correct. Uh, and so when if di Herod died in 1, the, the right years to look for yeah. the star are 2 and 3. 2 and 3, yeah. sure. And I try to put all that stuff linked on my website because there's a lot of scholarship behind that. If they go to BethlehemStar.net, they can access that. Well, you have done some wonderful research and homework on all of this for us and put it together in a great DVD, The Star of Bethlehem, Unlock the Mystery of the World's Most Famous Star. What do you hope people will come away from after they watch I'm this? I'm going to tell you that, but first, Terry, do you know what happened to that thing? What? I, I mean, I knew it was going to be wonderful. That has been the top-selling uh, documentary in the world. Really? No, no qualifications. Number one on Amazon. You think I have that screenshot? <laughs> <laughs> Blew me away. You know, God has chosen really? to use this. God has chosen to use that thing. Um, when they take away from it will be a number of things. First of all, we all have got an Anthony, an Uncle Anthony, or, you know, or Susan, yes. or someone we love, who if you say the name of Jesus, the ice wall goes up, and mm -hmm. that's that. Mm -hmm. But they like mysteries. Anyone will look at a mystery. Fact. That's a great mm -hmm. mystery. In fact, it's historical, it's objective, scientific, but it's entertaining. Yes. Um, and it packs a spiritual wallop. It's like a Trojan horse. It's like the perfect thing to give somebody you love who doesn't want to talk about the Lord. Well, it's, it's a great time of the year to give it to them as well. Thank you so much for being with no, us. I want to let you know you can check out the best-selling DVD. It's called The Star of Bethlehem. It's available nationwide. So Merry Christmas to all of you.